Our next topic is transmission-based precautions. These are the second level of basic infection control. These are to be used in addition to standard precautions for patients who may be infected or colonized with certain infectious agent, which additional precautions are needed to prevent infection transmission. We have airborne, droplet, and contact precautions. For airborne precautions, so airborne precaution is used for patients known or suspected to be infected with pathogens transmitted by the airborne route. These diseases can be transmitted through air. Example of diseases that can be transmitted through airborne routes are measles or our rubella virus, varicella virus or our chickenpox, pulmonary tuberculosis, disseminated herpes zoster, SARS or severe acute respiratory syndrome, and our Middle East Respiratory Syndrome coronavirus or our MERS-CoV. Since these diseases can be transmitted through air, patients should be placed in a special room or in an airborne infection isolation room or negative pressure rooms. In a negative pressure room, the flow of air is from outside to inside. When you transfer patients on airborne precautions, the healthcare worker is required to wear an N95 respirator while the patient wears surgical mask. Please don't forget to provide N95 respirator for the elevator operator if you will transport the patient through the use of elevators. Due to COVID-19 and limited supply of N95, Staff caring for patients with airborne infection should wear N95 covered with surgical mask and facial or goggles for all patient interactions. To ensure that airborne infection isolation room or negative pressure rooms is negative pressure, magnihilic gauges are places on top of the patient's door. Air pressure is monitored by the engineering department. Staff should always check the magnetic gauge and report abnormal findings to engineering. The minimum re pressure requirement is negative 0.254 mm of water or negative 0.01 inch of water. All patients in the emergency department with airborne diseases must be admitted in an isolation room. If there is no available isolation room in the floors, patient must be transferred to other hospital. If the a patient opted to stay, patient must stay in the ED hot zone until an isolation room becomes available. For patients who are discovered to have airborne diseases during the course of his or her confinement in the inpatient unit, the following are being done while awaiting transfer to isolation room. The patient should wear a surgical mask. Due to COVID-19 pandemic, we require all our patients to wear surgical masks. Patients should be placed in a private room if the patient is in the ward, so you have to transfer the patient in a private room. The door should always be closed. Healthcare workers should wear an N95 respirator in addition to the face shield. Portable HEPA filter should be borrowed from the engineering department. So this is the setup until the patient is transferred to an airborne infection isolation room. Units with airborne infection isolation room. So due to COVID-19 pandemic, we converted several units to negative pressure room. So now we have 10 units with negative pressure rooms. We have negative pressure rooms in the emergency department, the 8 wing, 7 wing, 6 wing, 5 wing, medical surgical ICU isolation room, neuro and cardiovascular intensive care unit, operating room, ICTR, renal care services, the PICU, the NICU, cardiac cat lab telemetry and we also have in our delivery room. Next is droplet precaution. 
Droplet precaution is used for patients known or suspected to be infected with microorganism transmitted by droplets or large particle droplets larger than 5 micrometer in size that can be generated by the patient during coughing, sneezing, talking, or during the performance of cough-inducing procedure. Diseases under droplet precaution, examples are pertussis, meningitis, influenza virus, and pneumonia. For patient placement, patients on droplet precaution are placed on a single patient room, but if there is a surge of patient, we can cohort patients who are infected with the same pathogen, provided that there is a three feet apart or there is a curtain between beds. So the PPE to be used, we need to use surgical masks for close contact. So during transport, the patient wear mask if she can tolerate. But due to COVID-19 pandemic, everyone with patient interaction should wear surgical masks and face shield or goggles at all times. Next is contact precaution. Contact precaution used for patient known or suspected infections that are spread by a direct contact or transfer of infectious agent from one infected person to another person without a contaminated or intermediate object or person. Or indirect contact, transfer of an infectious agent through a contaminated intermediate object or person. Example of diseases uh, for contact precaution, we have the multidrug resistant organisms and the Clostridioides difficile or C. diff. For contact precautions, patients who are in contact precautions are placed on single patient room. Gown and glove should be used for all patient interactions. But in response to COVID-19, everyone is required to wear surgical mask and facial. So if you are handling patients on contact precaution in addition to surgical mask and facial, you have to wear a gown and a gloves. Here are the example of multi-drug resistant organisms. So we have methicillin resistant staphylococcus or use, vancomycin intermediate staph or use, vancomycin resistant staph or use, vancomycin resistant enterococcus species, organism producing extended spectrum beta lactamases, including the Escherichia coli or E. coli, Klebsiella pneumoniae, and Enterobacter species. Acinetobacter baumani resistant to all my antimicrobial agents, Pseudomonas aeruginosa resistant to all antimicrobial agents, Clostridioides difficile or C. diff, and Carbapenemase producing Klebsiella pneumoniae. Registered nurses have the authority to automatically implement contact precaution for patients identified to be colonized or infected with MDR or C. diff. MRSA, v VISA, VRSA, VRE, SBL, positive contact precautions are maintained while they are admitted unless they, they will be cleared by their infectious disease doctor. For long-staying patient, clearance for lifting precautions should be sought from the Infection Prevention Control Department. For C. diff, Cleaning should also be endorsed to housekeeping because sodium hypochlorite should be used in cleaning the patient's room. Contact precaution may be discontinued if there is no episodes of diarrhea for 48 hours. This poster is posted outside the patient's room to remind staff to wear gown and gloves before entering the patient's room. Dedicated patient care equipment should be used for patients on contact precaution, such as the stethoscope, PP app, and thermometer. Yellow waste bins and linen bins are also placed by housekeeping inside the patient's room. This poster is posted inside the patient's room to remind the staff to remove PPE before exiting the room, to disinfect all shared equipment before and after use, and also to perform hand hygiene. 